Yeah. You want to? You came to America and you want to find uh, a black woman? Yes, yes, yes. I tired of sideway pussy. I want making me a nice booty. <laughs> What's up, y'all? I just wanted to come on here real quick and have some conversation about Asian men and Black women exploring romantic relationships, specifically East Asian men, as well as the characters Molly and Andrew, aka Asian Bay, on the show Insecure. So I didn't realize that there's this AMBW movement happening. I thought that the recent uptick in black women's interest in Asian men that I was seeing in threads online was because of Asian Bay from HBO's Insecure. So this quote unquote movement is small, it's kind of behind the scenes, but it's still big enough to be noticeable. The notion of the AMBW movement is that Asian men and black women are both marginalized in the dating world, so we should just come together and date each other. So Issa Rae is one of the creators of the show Insecure, and she wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girls. So she devoted a whole chapter to Asian men, black women relationships. And what she does is she compares the two groups and she talks about how we're both bogged down with negative stereotypes. She says that black women and Asian men are at the bottom of the dating totem pole. So there was some study done, and I say study loosely because it was conducted by OkCupid, and it found that basically people prefer to be within their own group or date within their own group and then when it comes to preferences as far as attraction or looks black women are least preferred and asian men are least preferred but i would take that with a grain of salt she goes on to say that if we were halloween candy we would be the tootsie rolls and the candy corn so in other words we'd be the last to be picked now i like candy corn myself that's the first thing i pick out then she goes on to start talking about how asian men have been displayed in the media as sexless props and how they've been feminized she referenced the little dick thing and how their women marry out at more than twice the rate that they do. So she's pointing out some parallels between black women and Asian men because we know that black women are also facing a lot of st uh, negative stereotypes in the media and we already know what those are so there's no reason to go into all that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but she makes a point to say that black men are also marrying out at twice the, the rate that black women do. So her proposal is that Asian men and black women that are educated join forces and marry and procreate with each other to close the gap. But I take issue with what she said because... I feel like coming together under those circumstances makes both parties look pretty desperate, in my opinion. It kind of cheapens the relationship, like you're coming together at a necessity instead of want or desire. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about you folks that met organically and fell in love and had kids and all that. I'm not talking about you. Moving on. So seeing this recent uptick in interest for Asian men has me a little dumbfounded because as far as I know, black women aren't checking for Asian men like that. In my real day-to-day -day life, I have never had a conversation with a black woman where an Asian man has ever come up in terms of dating. And I'm not trying to be a jerk, I'm just being real. Asian men just tend to fly under the radar in a lot of things, but especially when it comes to romance. Seeing this sudden interest in Andrew, or Asian Bay as we've dubbed him, has me thinking, even if you wanted to date an Asian man or if you're open to it, is it really a viable option for black women? And that's what I want to talk about today. As well as, so far, how Asian Bay and Molly's relationship has played out on the show. Now, obviously, the coupling of Molly and Asian Bay is a nod to that chapter in Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl. However, so far in their storyline, we have not seen a victory for AMBW couples or for Molly. And what I mean by that is that chapter in the book reads as an Asian savior narrative. She says something to the effect of, black women, don't you deserve, don't you want a man that is classified as intelligent and hardworking? I don't know if that was a dig, but let's move on from that. Um, and then she starts pleading with Asian men. And she says something like, Chinese men, you're not gonna get an Asian woman because there's too many of them marrying out. So won't you please consider black women? Please Please consider us poor, lonely black women. <laughs> so if it's the intention of Issa or the writers of the show to highlight and positively portray AMBW relationships, I feel like they're just falling short right now because Molly is still not the prize. And it's been hard for me to watch her season to season, bouncing from man to man to land on Andrew, and then for her to still not be a prize to him or a trophy to him. Do you know what I mean? Cause I mean like, 
Molly embodies the woman that Issa is describing in that book. She's a high maintenance, high strung, independent, don't need no man. She is a she's a well educated lawyer on the show. She has I think a penthouse she is doing very well for herself but she has not been able to find lasting love she's also attractive and she's fit but her dating life has been really shitty and with all that said molly still looks good on paper and you could argue that she's even doing better than andrew because if you think about it molly at least has her own place andrew as far as we know is still living with crocodile bay now she's not perfect she does have some communication issues and she has some emotional issues but those are things that you can work through so those aren't really strikes against her per se but in my opinion she is definitely the prize and also i want to add that there was some foreshadowing that happened in the first season that molly's character would be the one that ends up with an asian bay and this is one of the instances in which we can see that Molly has had some growth because in season one, when Issa's coworker or whoever that Asian guy was, was interested in getting to know Molly, she said something to the effect of Jet Li or Jackie Chan was too thirsty. So she was okay with making inappropriate comments back then. But fast forward to the current season, when Kelly asked her about Asian Bay's samurai dick, <laughs> she defended him and said, well, that's someone from Japan and you're racist. So that's growth for Molly. And that is a positive, and that is a positive reflection of AMBW couples that we can defend each other. We can grow together and the communities can learn from each other. The other thing missing from Molly and Asian Bay's relationship is we're not seeing affirmations from Andrew to Molly. We're not really sure how exactly he feels about her. And really the relationship kind of plays into a stereotype because their relationship so far as we've seen it has had a lot of sexual innuendo. He says something about, can I give you some thug passion? <laughs> and she's like, dude, you got baby hair. There is nothing thug about you. <laughs> he also says something about, can I eat the cake? Um, we don't know anything about his background. I had joked at one point that he may even be a, a hitman because we didn't know what he did for a living for sure. We know he doesn't want to talk about his family. So we still don't know where he comes from other than the city he grew up in and I mean, we don't even know if his parents are still alive or anything like that. She hasn't brought him around his family, he hasn't brought him around hers. Their friends are not co-mingling. So as far as we know, this is kind of like a situationship more than a relationship. And I think it kind of falls on Asian Bay or Andrew because he's not telling Molly, I want to be with you for sure. I want to be with you for a long time. I want to grow and build with you. It's kind of just like, I like being around you. I like hanging out and I like having sex with you. She had at one point, he was even dating other people when she thought they were exclusive. The other thing missing from their storyline is the kinship factor. Now, Asian Bay is tailored to appeal to black women and he is fine now that's fine he fine <laughs> and he appears to be a woke asian but that is a conversation that has been missing from those two because you can't separate race ethnicity from culture like you just can't he is an asian man and she is a black woman so so far they've been able to avoid that but we still have i think maybe six episodes left in the season so that may play out but the conversation is just it's just gonna have to happen because we're not like we don't see color type of people so eventually they're gonna have to talk about how our communities historically don't fuck with each other there's there's a lot of suspicion and there's a lot of mistrust and being that we're not allies it's harder to have a serious relationship or to take someone seriously and you could argue that you could say the same thing for whites but there is a difference there's a lot of overlap between white and black communities we tend to be in a lot of the same spaces whether we want to or not and also since black people have been forced to assimilate to an extent to white culture is kind of easier to enter a situation like that than it is with someone Asian because I mean our communities just don't I guess depending on where you live they just don't come into contact very often and if they do at least in the media is seen as very is very negative to be honest and that's been my experience too is uh, my interactions with Asian people have been at beauty supply stores pretty much I did know some in college but that wasn't really that big of a thing. We weren't really friends. We were just friendly. But the majority of my interactions have been negative. So I don't know.
So the last thing I want to mention, I do want to give credit to the writers of the show because one thing they have done very well with this A and BW couple is they have practiced corrective promotion with Asian Bay. Like I said, he's tailored to black women or to appeal to a black woman, but he could appeal to anyone. To be honest, that guy has a lot of sex appeal and that is something we don't see with Asian men in mainstream media. We don't see them as love interests ever. We don't see them having sex. Has anyone ever seen a actually wait 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 there was the guy on the walking dead supposedly he had a sex scene i didn't see it but supposedly he had one and actually i saw online someone was like it had to be the end of the world for the asian guy to get some but other than him i can't think of any naked asian man on tv um like i said they are not considered a love interest they are not considered desirable they're always played as the nerd or the asexual or the just prop basically just someone like a placeholder just someone there so it is really refreshing to see an Asian man in a positive light with the the desirability factor that Asian Bay possesses um and he does a great job I mean I hope he goes really far in his career um but I just wanted to highlight the importance of having a desirable, confident, outspoken Asian guy at the forefront of a relationship and especially a black woman, Asian man relationship, because that's something we just never see. I don't know. Who knew that they were fine? <laughs> well, see, I knew that they were fine because I remember Russell Wong and he was fine. He's still fine. So get with the program so yeah asian men are actively taking a page out of black women's book and our quest for corrective promotion and positive promotion and they are stepping up and stepping out and it's a great thing to see and hopefully our communities can come together and maybe even collaborate and share notes but as far as the question of whether i think asian men are a viable option for black women i would say collectively no <laughs> but like any man you have to vet them individually because looking at someone's race to as a determining factor into how they will act that's not how this works people are just people people are individuals so you have to just vet them individually and for those of you who are looking to date asian men i hope it works out for you let me know in the comments what your experiences have been because i am very curious <laughs> um yeah let me know what you think of asian bay and molly at this point but i hope you guys like it i will see you in the next one bye